Now our scanner has been set up, we can actually start move on to making a scan. To make a scan we have to open the scanner software. And just like before we start with setting up our video. For this we go to video, capture, set device, like before. It should be the same camera. OK, capture a video on. I've already placed an object on my turntable, in this case a Buddha head. As you can see here, it's always wise to just briefly verify that everything is okay and your camera can see what you want to see. Especially with larger objects you might actually have something out of your field. I'm turning on my laser, and as you can see I have a nice line on my object from the laser. Even though this is a nice line, it is typically best to get the, the environment as dark as possible, so turn off lights, close curtains. The darker the better. Now it's not always possible to get it as dark as you want, therefore we have the possibility to enhance the video. And we can, by changing the brightness and contrast, we are typically able to get a very well defined line. Typically you want to boost, move the brightness down and contrast up a little bit. Turning the image to black and white also can help a bit. I have now a very nice line, as you can see by turning the table, that I am going to use for making this actual scan. OK, to, to clean the window. I'm now going to set up my actual scan settings. Here I have to set up my process. The scan settings process window comes up by selecting these options. I can also alternatively use a scan session panel and there I find the process button. Make sure PC control is on. Make sure that the USB port has been selected. We have already set up our system before. You've seen this screen, USB device, meaning that my turntable is active. It's a slightly heavy object, so I want to move the speed a bit down. Typically, you do not have to change any of these values. I am going to increase my settle time a little bit. This is the time that it takes from turning the table until taking the actual snapshot to minimize wobbling a bit. Especially with heavier objects, it might vibrate a little bit after a step. Again here, using arrow keys might help getting the small adjustments made. Frame buffer allocation. Typically you want to use hard disk unless you have a really a lot of memory. I want to do a quick scan, so I'm just going to leave it at 200 steps, which is the smallest amount that we can offer. I'm not going to use a stack frame filter. This is helpful if you have a lot of noise in your camera image. Uh, if you have a decent camera, you should be able to get a nice line. You don't need this. But if needed, you can always change this. I'm going to use uncompressed data. reason for this being that compressed data might give bad results in your scan because it changes the image slightly. Make sure that you have geometry selected and we have set up our scan. Now I have the option to either initialize right here in the scan session panel or in the scan from the menu. I'm using the menu version. This pop-up window will inform you that the scan session has been initialized. Press OK. Now I can make start the actual scan. To do this I can have again the choice either in my scan session panel or in my menu. Press start scan. Now you see that the turntable starts turning while grabbing images. Here at the bottom you can see at which image it is. While rotating it will grab the, the images and use these images later on to detect or to calculate the 3D shape of your object. Typically this should take a minute, maybe two, depending a bit on your computer and the complexity of your scan, higher accurate scans of course take longer times. In the beginning you want to also do use small smaller scans just to get familiar with the system. Once the scan is made it will allocate the frames and once that part is finished the 
scan compiler window will come up. Here you have the ability to set all the, the compiler settings. First of all, what we have to do is we have to set the scan, the camera angle. Earlier we had determined that this was exactly 30 degrees, so that's where I'm going to set it. The turntable center is hasn't changed, so I'm going to leave it there. Next thing I have to do is set the start stop marker. For this, I have to move the slider all the way to the left, then press start to set the start marker, move it all the way to the right to set the stop marker. This is to tell the software which data frames it should actually use in its calculations. Next thing is I have to change the scan line isolation level. This tells the sensitivity of the, of the algorithm that detects the laser line. A very low level means a very sensitive system, a very high level, a very low sensitive system. You can see this by the green line that is o overlaid on the laser line. If you move it to the right, it should get less, should see less points. If you move to the left, you should see more points, but also you'll get more noise. Here you see a nice point, there's a little reflection there which causes the laser detection line to be slightly offset to the left. And by changing the scan line isolation, we have the ability to optimize it a little bit. Typically you want to have this value between 30 and 70. Now it's overlaid slightly better. Do a quick verification if of the frames if I see anything strange. It's wise to always do this. If you make a mistake, you'll most likely find it here. You don't have to redo your whole scan. Another possibility is the use of the area of interest. By using the area of interest, the algorithm will only use the information that is inside the blue box. By changing the sliders, you can modify the size of the blue box. Anything that's outside the blue box is going to be ignored by the algorithm. This is especially helpful here if you have reflections of the laser light on the wall behind, for example. I don't have that, so I'm not going to use it. I've set up everything, so it's okay. Now I have to compile the scan. Also here I have two possibilities. I can either compile in my scan session panel or from the menu. And you'll just see the system running through all the frames and calculating the Z data. Once this is done, it will ask you to display a raw model of the three of the scan. Typically, you want to say yes to verify that your scan has been done correctly. And here we are. We have the end result: the geometry scan of the Buddha head on the table. Satisfied with the results, I'm going to save this. File, save scan, and save it in a location of your preference. And now we have made a geometry scan.